you know, I always am trying to find what the underlying cause is for things. And, and sometimes with these kinds of cases, we will never know, but I always go through a few extra questions to see if I can pick anything out. There's a subset of patients that are gonna be some kind of neurological insult that you can pretty well point to as being the likely cause, where whether it's a concussion or a brain tumor that was removed, something that's compromised the integrity of the brain physically in some way. But then there's another subset of patients and it's more often the kids. And we peel back the history and it turns out that there's some kind of medication they took. And it's always a different medication, but it's something they took for longer than you would have expected or something they took really early on in life. So I can't say for sure that's the causation, but that's something that we, you know, I haven't found a case yet where we haven't found a kid who had some kind of unusual medication in their history. So that's interesting. There's quite a lot. The research has been, well, first of all, very well done research, really methodical and in a good sequence to help appeal to all types of medical professionals. So I'm really grateful for that level of integrity in the research. It's been great to see actual evidence of visual snow syndrome on things like functional MRIs and EEGs and um, to start to appreciate some of the things that could be going on on a neurochemical level, the changes in neurotransmitters. So there's, there's so much more that's known and understood. And I think that that helps patients so much when what they're going through and their subjective experience is able to be validated. There's so much understanding in what else ties into it. The non-visual symptoms. I mean, that for a couple of my patients, when I had them look at the visual snow syndrome checklist, the diagnostic checklist, and we looked at the non-visual symptoms, they said, oh yes, that's what that is, that depersonalization. Like that's what I experienced sometimes and I never knew what to call it. So it's really helpful to provide all that constellation of symptoms together so that patients can understand that what they're experiencing is part of, a, a part of one syndrome and it helps them to understand what they're going through. I really hope we get a better understanding of the underlying etiology. What is connecting all of these different symptoms, what is connecting these different cases together. Right now we are just treating the symptoms and we do see a significant improvement in symptoms and we can have patients feel like they are mostly all the way better at times, but if we can understand even more, we might be able to find another method of non-invasive treatment that can help patients at an even deeper level. The other thing I look forward to in the next 10 years with the research on visual snow syndrome is increased awareness. There's still a lot to be done with having general optometrists understanding this condition because they are the front line for so many of these cases. It's really important that they're identified and they're asking, it's a really quick question, do you have static in your vision? And then they can open up this whole pathway for the patient to understand more and get help. So I really am trying to promote that here in Denver, in, in the area, to educate other optometrists about what uh, they can do and how to find these patients and get them the best help they can. Mm -hmm.